Hi, I'm Grace Erickson, a developer advocate with WP Engine focused on headless WordPress. In this crash course, we're going to learn how to build a headless WordPress app using Faust.js, WP GraphQL, and advanced custom fields. To showcase how to use Faust.js and ACF, we will build a site containing Taylor Swift's discography. This will require the following three types of pages, an albums page, an album details page, and a song details page. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to create custom post types and fields using advanced custom fields, create new posts for those models in the WordPress admin dashboard, run test queries to get ACF data using the graphical IDE, use Faust and Apollo client to fetch ACF data in our decoupled Next.js app and render our React components. To get started, you'll need to have both Node.js and NPM installed. If you aren't sure whether or not you have them installed, you can run the node-v and npm-v commands in your terminal. The terminal output should either tell you which versions you have installed or that it cannot find the commands node or npm to run them. To begin, we'll create a new Faust project by running the following command. Now, cd into your new app and copy the sample environment template. Finally, run the dev server. You can now visit localhost 3000 to see your new project. Next, we'll need a local WordPress site that can be used as the data source for our example application. To save time, I've already created a WordPress instance using local. To access the WP Admin panel of your new site, click WP Admin in the Site Details pane in Local. Our current Faust.js app loads WordPress content from the demo site at faustexample.wpengine.com. However, we want to connect it to our local WordPress site instead. First, install and activate the Faust and WP GraphQL plugins on your WordPress site. Once the necessary plugins have been installed, open the .env.local file you created earlier in a code editor. It should look something like this. We need to update this information using our WordPress instance. The necessary values can be found in the WordPress admin sidebar under Settings and then Faust. In the .env.local file, Update the next public WordPress URL value with your WordPress site URL and the Faust secret key value with the secret key found on the Faust's settings page. Additionally, on the WordPress admin settings page, set the front end site URL to match the URL running our front end Faust.js app locally. With the basic headless WordPress site up and running, there are a few plugins left to install and a few settings to check. There are two additional plugins that we need to add, Advanced Custom Fields and WP GraphQL for Advanced Custom Fields. In the WordPress plugin directory, search for Advanced Custom Fields and then install and activate the plugin. This should add a Custom Fields tab to your WordPress admin sidebar. The ACF plugin is used to register our custom post types and custom fields. WP GraphQL for advanced custom fields is not currently available on WordPress, so you must download it from GitHub. To install the plugin from GitHub, download the latest release zip file, upload the zip file to your WordPress install, and activate the plugin. This is the WP GraphQL extension that exposes ACF data via the WP GraphQL schema. Finally, we need to edit some WP GraphQL settings. Open the GraphQL settings menu and check the option labeled Enable GraphQL Debug Mode. And then check the option labeled Enable Public Introspection. Click Save Changes. 
Now we're ready to use ACF to set up our custom post types of song and album and their respective field groups. Let's create our song's post type first since it's a bit simpler. In the WordPress admin sidebar, we'll go to ACF and then post types. This should bring us to a page where we can add a new post type. Click add new and fill out the following fields. Set plural label to songs. Set singular label to song. Set post type key to song. This post type still needs to be shown in GraphQL so we can access the posts we create. Further down on the screen, click the slider for advanced configuration. Select the furthest right tab titled GraphQL and enable the show in GraphQL slider. The auto-generated GraphQL single name and GraphQL plural name can be kept without editing. Then click the Save Changes button to create the new post type. In the WordPress admin sidebar, you'll see that a menu item has been added for our new song's custom post type. After saving the new song's post type, you will get a success banner on the top of the screen alerting you, song's post type created. There are several options underneath this message. Click on the first option to add fields to songs. This will navigate you to the form to add a new field group and autofill the title of this field group as song fields. Within this form, we can create all of the fields that should belong to a song. Our first field will be the song's title. We'll set up the field like this. Select text for the field type, enter a field label of song title, stick with the auto-generated field name of song underscore title, leave the default value empty. We'll create the length, lyrics, and genre fields in a similar way by clicking the Add Field button underneath each completed field. The length field will look like this. Select text for the field type, enter a field label of length, stick with the auto-generated field name of length, leave the default value empty. The lyrics field will look like this. Select text area for the field type, enter a field label of lyrics, stick with the auto-generated field name of lyrics. As the last field for the song post type, we need to add a genre field. Grouping songs together based on their genre is a perfect use case for a WordPress taxonomy. The genre field will look like this. Select taxonomy for the field type, enter a field label of genre, stick with the auto-generated field name of genre, select tag as the type of a taxonomy to be displayed, Check the slider for Create Terms, Save Terms, and Load Terms. Select Term ID as the return value. Select Checkbox for the appearance. Finally, scroll down past the Fields section to the Settings section. Ensure the rules say, Show this field group if post type is equal to song. Then, below the Settings section in the GraphQL section, check the slider for Show in GraphQL to access this data in our front-end app. Click Save Changes at the top of the screen. That's it for our song's custom post type and custom fields. Now let's turn to the album's post type. In the WordPress admin sidebar, navigate again to the ACF and then Post Types to create a new post type. Click Add New and fill out the following fields. Set plural label to albums, set singular label to album, and set post type key to album. Just as we did with the song post type, we need to enable the album post type to be shown in GraphQL. Further down on this screen, click the slider for advanced configuration. Select the furthest right tab titled GraphQL and enable the show in GraphQL slider. The auto-generated GraphQL single name and GraphQL plural name can be kept without editing. Then, click the Save Changes button to create the new post type. In the WordPress admin sidebar, you'll see that a menu item has been added for our new album's custom post type. After saving the new album's post type, you'll get a success banner on the top of the screen alerting you, Albums Post Type Created. Click on the link to add fields to albums. This will navigate you to the form to add a new field group and autofill the title of this field group as album fields. Within this form, we can create all of the fields that should belong to an album. Our first field will be the album's title. We'll set the field up like this. 
select text for the field type, enter a field label of album title, stick with the auto-generated field name of album underscore title, and leave the default value empty. We'll create the release date, cover, and track list fields in a similar way, but using different field types. The release date field will look like this. Select date picker for the field type, enter a field label of release date, stick with the auto-generated field name of release underscore date, select month slash day slash year as the display format and return format. The cover field will look like this. Select image for the field type, enter a field label of cover, stick with the auto-generated field name of cover, select image ID as the return format, and select all for the library. The tracklist field will look like this. Select relationship for the field type, enter a field label of track list, stick with the auto-generated field name of track underscore list, select song for the filter by post type, leave filter by taxonomy blank, and leave all options for filters checked, and select post object for the return format. Finally, scroll down past the fields section to the settings section. Ensure that the rules say, show this field group if post type is equal to album. Then, below the settings section in the GraphQL section, check the slider for show in GraphQL to access this data in our front end app. Click save changes at the top of the screen. That's it for our album's custom post type and custom fields. Next, let's look at how to create and edit album and song data so that we can populate all of the data about Taylor Swift's discography. From the WordPress admin sidebar, go to Songs and then Add New. You'll see the fields we registered reflected here. Create entries for each of Taylor Swift's songs, Taylor's version of course. Then we'll do the same thing for albums. From the WordPress admin sidebar, go to Albums and then Add New. You'll see the fields we registered reflected here as well. Create entries for each of Taylor Swift's albums, again, Taylor's version of course. At this point, our custom post types and custom fields have been created and populated with data, and we have chosen to automatically add them to the GraphQL schema. This means that we are already set up to query for song or albums data in our front-end JavaScript app. Let's fire off a test query to try that out. Head over to the embedded graphical IDE that the WP GraphQL plugin provides and use the Query Composer to build a query using songs or albums. Let's build an example. Now, let's go ahead and click the play icon to fire off the query we just wrote and you'll see that the data for the song's posts you created comes back in the response. Finally, Apollo Client requires you to provide a possible types object that maps interfaces to all of their possible types. Faust provides a CLI command you can use on your package.json scripts to generate this file. In the terminal, run the generate script, npm run generate. Now our songs and albums content models are fully built out and we've seen how we can query for them via WP GraphQL. Now let's use this data in our front-end Faust.js app. In the code editor, open the Faust.js project directory that you created. After opening the project directory, your text editor should look like this. First, we'll create the albums page. To get started, create a new file titled albums.js inside of the pages directory. We want to create a new page displaying a grid of all of Taylor Swift's albums. Next.js uses a routing method known as page-based routing, meaning that generally the routes of your site or application will correspond to the file structure of your pages folder. In this case, the albums.js file corresponds to your site's local URL slash albums. To get the data we need, start by importing GQL and use query from Apollo Client at the top of our albums.js file. Then we'll add another import statement for a component that we will build in a later step called album card. We need to create a GraphQL query to return all of the data about each album for our homepage. 
We will do this back inside of the WordPress admin dashboard using the Query Composer to build a query that returns the album cover image, release date, database ID, and slug. Then, back in our code editor, we will create a GraphQL query named getAlbums underneath the import statements. Copy the query we built in the graphical IDE and place it into the GQL function. Next, create a function to hold our albums page. Inside the albums function, pass the getAlbums query to the useQuery hook. The useQueryReact hook is the primary API for executing queries in an Apollo application. To run a query within a React component, call useQuery and pass it a GraphQL query string, like the one we just created. When your component renders, useQuery returns an object from Apollo client that contains loading, error, and data properties you can use to render your UI. Inside the albums component, we need to write an expression that iterates over the albums array to display each one. We will do this by rendering an unordered list, then map over the albums and render a list item containing an album card component for each album. Now, let's create the component that we are calling in this main file. Inside of the components directory, create a new file called albumcard.js. First, add an import statement for the next.js link component. Then, create a function called albumcard that accepts an individual album's data as a prop. Inside of the return statement, display an image of the album's cover wrapped in a link that points to the individual album details page that we will build out later. Now, let's create the component that we can use to wrap around every other JSX element to follow Next.js's rule that JSX expressions must have one parent element. Inside of the components directory, create a new file called layout.js. Add an import statement for the Next.js head component. Add the following code to the return statement of the layout function. Back in the albums.js file, import this layout component file. Then, wrap everything that's currently inside of the return statement inside of a layout component. Let's check out the site running in the browser. You can see the 10 album covers displayed, but it's not very pretty. Let's add some styles to this page. In the styles directory, add the following SCSS declarations to the existing base.scss file. Back in the albums file, add the gallery class to the UL element and the gallery item class to the LI element. Now let's look at that page in the browser again. It looks way better and we're done with the albums page. Now, let's create the page that displays an individual album's details. Inside of the pages directory, 
create a new folder called albums with a file inside called albumslug.js. To get the data we need, start by adding an import statement for GQL and use query from Apollo client at the top of the file. We need to create a GraphQL query to return all of the data about the specific album for our album details page. We will do this back inside the WordPress admin dashboard using the query composer to build a query that returns the individual album's title, cover image, release date, and the list of all of the songs on that album. We need to determine which album's data to retrieve based on the slug from the URL. Let's hard code the slug red tailors version into the query to test that it returns the correct information. However, this query needs to be able to return the data for any album, not just Red Taylor's version. We can add a variable called album slug into the query instead of hard coding the value. Below the query, we can set a value for the variable to ensure it still works as expected. Then, back in our code editor, we will create a GraphQL query named Get Album Details underneath the import statements. Copy the query we built in the graphical IDE and paste it into a GQL function. Next, we'll import the Next.js router component. The Use Router Hooks query object allows us to access the dynamic route parameter album slug that we created with the albumslug.js file and use that inside of our GraphQL client. Then create a function called album with a blink return statement for now. Inside of this album function, pass the get album details query and the album slug retrieved from the Use Router Hook to the use query hook to retrieve the requested data on the current album. Now that we have access to the individual album's data, we'll focus on the view for the page. Start with adding import statements for our layout component and the Next.js link component. Inside of the return statement of the album function, we will build out the JSX elements. First, wrap everything inside of the layout component. At the top of the screen, we will also add a button for users to return to the main page of the site. Then we'll list out all of the details of the album that we entered through ACF in WordPress, title, release date, cover image, and the list of songs.
Check out the site running in the browser and navigate to the album details page by clicking on one of the cover images. You can see all of the information that we want, but again, it's not very pretty. So let's add some styles to this page. Go back to the base.scss file and add the following additional SCSS declarations. Use these SCSS classes and assign them to their respective elements in the albumslug.js file. Now, look at our page in the browser again. We have completed the album details page. Creating the individual song details page will be very similar to creating the individual album details page. First, let's create a page to display an individual song's details. Inside of the pages directory, create a new folder called songs with a new file inside of it called songslug.js. To get the data we need, we'll need to import GQL and use Query from Apollo Client and use Router from Next Router. We need to create a GraphQL query to return all of the data about the specific song for our song details page. We will do this back inside the WordPress admin dashboard using the query composer to build a query that returns the individual song's title, length, lyrics, and genre. We need to determine which song data to retrieve based on the slug from the URL, just as we did with the album details page. We can use a variable in the query again to accept the song slug and return the data about the corresponding song. Back in our code editor, we will create a GraphQL query named GetSongDetails underneath the import statement. Copy the query we built in the graphical IDE and paste it into the GQL function. Then, create a function called song with a blank return statement for now. Inside of this song function, pass the GetSongDetails query and the song slug retrieved from the useRouter hook to the use query hook to retrieve the requested data on the current song. Now that we have access to the individual song's data, we'll focus on the view for the page. Start with adding import statements for our layout component and the Next.js link component. Inside the return statement of the song function, we will build out the JSX elements. This will be very similar to what we built for the album slug page. List out the details of the song that we entered through ACF in WordPress. Song title, link, genre, and lyrics.
Check out the site running in the browser and navigate to the song details page by clicking on one of the song titles from the album's track list. You can see all of the information that we want, but it's not very pretty. So let's add some styles to this page. We can use the existing classes that we added to the base.scss file for the album details page. Assign these classes to their respective elements in songslug.js file. Then go back to their browser to see our completed song details page. You should now be able to navigate back and forth between the home page, the album details page, and the song details page. Congratulations on creating a headless WordPress site. Hopefully you now have a good understanding of how you can leverage tools like Faust.js, ACF, and WP GraphQL to build headless WordPress sites. If for any reason you weren't able to follow along with the steps outlined in this video, you can refer to the corresponding blog post or access the GitHub repository linked in the bio. For more headless content, follow our YouTube account and Twitter at WP Builders, join our headless Discord channel, and check out builders.wpengine.com. Thanks for watching.